What's up everybody? It's Manny. This is the spread. This is the wild card round. We survived the regular season. Whole thing, all 17 weeks. Me and Bubblegum Jack up here. So uh, pretty happy to bring you the wild card round. As you can see, it was a little easier on me, less to write. So, uh, you know, just four games. I was thinking about including the over-unders, but, you know, I decided to keep it simple. At some point, I'll explain the over-unders, but, you know, for those of you guys who know what that is, take a look at the over-unders for the games that might have snow, mainly this one, New England game. Might be nice to have under when you turn on the TV screen and snow is falling from left to right on your TV. But, uh, anyway, without any more delay, the Jets are playing at Cincinnati in a rematch of last week's um, Cincinnati New York Jets game and went to, to the Jets uh, beating the Bengals brains pretty good but that game really didn't have a you know didn't mean a lot to Cincinnati they had nothing to play for it wasn't a good indicator of what's gonna happen this game and I like the Cincinnati Bengals I'm gonna tell you why I think that the Jets have you know gotten this far with their good defense um, their best player, Chris Jenkins, you know, got hurt for the season. He's one of the front four, one of the big guys on that defensive line. The front four is just the four guys that come in, you know, come in uh, to play either the rush or the quarterback. Front four, the D line, you know, whatever you want to call. Them. So the Jets, and they're missing their main guy. I mean, Sanchez has had a great season on offense, just getting them to the playoffs. And by great season, I mean he, you know, he hasn't messed things up. The rookie. You know, just has to go through the motions, not give the ball away, and he's done just that with good parts around him. Um, Sanchez deserves a pat on the back. But I'm going to go with the Bengals. I think, you know, they're still on an emotional high from, or I don't know if I'd call it an emotional high, but they have, you know, a lot of emotions running through for the Chris Henry deal. I think that they have a lot to play for. I think they want to win a playoff game. It's been a while since they've been there. They play that tough division with Baltimore and Pittsburgh in the AFC North. Um, Carson Palmer definitely wants a win here. This is a good opportunity for them to just win a home game against an inferior team. I think they're going to throw the ball through the air, cover the two and a half. I think the only reason it's so low is because the Jets did beat Cincinnati last week in that game, uh, Week 17 game. that really meant a lot more to the Jets who needed it to get in to the playoffs than it did to the Cincinnati Bengals. But this week we'll go with the Bengals. Let's go on with my pen. Is it running out of ink? No. Okay. We're good. Oh, text message. All right, Baltimore at New England. Um, New England, guys, three and a half is too much. I consider this to be a grimy game. I think that I would even stay away from New England on the money line. I think that this is definitely a potential upset here. Baltimore is one of those teams that's built for the playoffs, like Pittsburgh of last year. Strong defense, pretty good offense. Uh, Flacco doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Good quarterback over there. They're hungry. New England just lost Wes Welker. That's a possession receiver. He's very important um, to their offense. He's just, you know, the closest guy to Tom Brady a lot of times. He's kind of like a tight end, you know, except usually I guess he, he does, he's not so over the middle. But he doesn't run these far routes. He's pretty close to the quarterback, and the quarterback knows where he's going to be. He's dependable. Without him, I think that's going to affect Brady. I like Baltimore to cover the three and a half. Especially with that strong defense, I like Ed Reed to maybe make a big play like he always does. Ball hawk, he's awesome. Um, you know, be careful. I don't know if I'd tell you to pick Baltimore on the money line, even though I do think it's going to be a good deal. I assume they'll be like 2-1 to one on the underdog, so they'll probably be like a plus 180. Probably a good value for your buck. Be careful. I like the 3.5 better because, you know, it's. I, I kind of think it's going to be a close game. So I think 3.5 is a lot of points. <clears throat> Philly at Dallas. Um, McNabb's got a lot of a lot of offensive weapons around him this year. Um, Basket, Macklin, you know, a lot of those guys that throw it to Selick, the tight end, throws it over the middle to you know Selick, and uh, it's worked all year. I like I like that offense better this year than I do in past years, but last week they looked really bad in a game that did matter. They were playing for the division, that's the NFC East, and Dallas won at home last week for uh, to clinch that division. Now they get to play at home as opposed to playing in Philadelphia. The number's four. Dallas worked them pretty good last time, and i like them to do it again. I think their front four is going to put pressure on Donovan. They got DeMarcus Ware and Spencer. He's 
big guys. They're going to get after McNabb and probably put pressure on him. McNabb, I'm not a McNabb guy, even though he's got more weapons than usual. I kind of like Dallas at home in that dome. I think it's going to be hard for Philly to put in the play. It's just so much noise, you know, when you're trying to call in your play and the fans are going crazy. Um, probably a lot of sound bouncing off that big screen. I don't know if it's a full dome or a partial dome. I should know. I'm sure there's a retractable roof with the kind of money they spend on that place. But either way, I like Dallas. I think Tony Romo's got, you know, just as many, if not more weapons, probably more, than uh, Donovan. He's playing at home. He's got Miles Austin to stud. He took, you know, Roy Williams' number one receiver spot. Roy Williams is a joke. I'm not a big Roy Williams guy. I don't care where he got drafted. I don't know. But he's not. just doesn't pan out. I can't believe they got rid of T.O. for that guy. But anyway, at least they got Miles Austin. They got Felix Jones, Marion Barber, you know, in a league where, you know, just not as many running backs. Um, the running, the, it's kind of, it's more of a throwing league, passing league every year. It's gradually shifting that way. And I like Dallas. Uh, they do have that running ability. Marion Barber can obviously pound it inside. And Felix Jones, they were running a lot of shotgun last week. Switching up, I think Dallas is going to win. Wade Phillips better win if he wants to keep his job. He can't keep losing these playoff games. It's terrible. But I like Dallas, guys. They're going to come. Green Bay at Arizona. Here's the last game. This is another repeat of last week. Arizona's at home. They got worked there last week by Green Bay. They couldn't do a darn thing right. But I do like Arizona. Be careful with this one, guys. Um, I think that last week they didn't really have much to play for either. I, I'm not sure how it was panning out. But maybe they did. Maybe they had a chance at the second seed. But either way, I like Arizona to kind of switch it up from last week to hold at home. I don't think Kurt Warner and his boys are going to lose another game in that building two weeks in a row. Um, but be real careful with this one. Green Bay's hot. Um, Aaron Rodgers got the hot hand, scored a lot of points. Their defense is holding pretty well. But I still like Arizona. Um, Last week makes you think, though, that's why the line's so low. If, you know, if Arizona won last week like you were supposed to, it'd probably be like seven, you know. So I got to think that Arizona's still the better team, even though Green Bay's hot. But be careful with this one. You know, somebody's going to just outright lose at home. That's going to be one of these two on the bottom. I feel much better about the two up here. But um, anyway, Arizona... Uh, if Matt Leinart's starting, you might want to go the other way. I'm not saying he's bad. I'm just saying I don't trust him. Um, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, catch you next week for the, what is it, divisional round?